people. Let it strengthen them in their faith. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Take your Bibles and turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 17. First Corinthians fifteen seventeen. As you know, I have been down uh, with, the, I'll say the flu. I never tested for COVID. I can't be bothered. And I uh, ended up on antibiotics. And praise God, they work like a charm. And uh, I'm, I'm, as far as I'm concerned, completely better now. But my voice is a little weak, so if it goes out, don't worry. Uh, I'll keep, I'll gum it to death if I have to. Uh, you just need to know that I'm not in pain. I'm not hurting. I'm doing all right. Amen. Amen. First Corinthians fifteen seventeen. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile. Well, we could just stop there. Your faith is futile if Christ hasn't been raised. And you're still in your sins. Then those also who have fallen asleep in Christ are lost. If only for this life we have hope, thank you, love. In Christ, we are to be pitied more than all men. But if Christ has indeed been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those that have fallen asleep, for since death came through a man, <coughs> the resurrection of the dead comes also through a man. For as in Adam all die. So in Christ, all will be made alive. Jumping to verse 45. So it is written, The first man, Adam, became a living being, and the last Adam, a life-giving spirit. The spiritual did not come first, but the natural. And after that, the spiritual. The first man was of the dust of the earth. The second man from heaven. As was the earthly man, so are those that are of the earth. As is the man from heaven, so also are those of, of heaven, who are of heaven. And just as we have become born, or pardon me, just as we have borne the likeness of the earthly man, so shall we bear the likeness of the man from heaven. Reading into this text a little bit, and not dealing with the issue of the resurrection, even though that is the main point of the text. I want to draw your attention, first of all, to verse 18. Then those that have fallen asleep in Christ are lost. He's talking now about if Christ hasn't been raised from the dead. Verse 19. If only for this life we have hope in Christ, it would be pitied more than all men. Then jump with me to verse 22. For as in Adam all die, so in Christ all will be made alive. Amen. Well, as we go through that, two little words seem to jump out. I, I love these, these little things that just sort of pop out of the text when, you, when you're looking for them. And the two words that just pop out of that text time and time again are the words, in Christ. In Christ. Then those that have fallen asleep in Christ are lost. He's talking now again, if Christ hasn't been raised. Then those that have fallen asleep in Christ have been lost. If only for this life we have hope in Christ, we would be pitied more than all men. And finally over in verse 22, for as in Adam all die, so in Christ all will be made alive. Now here's how this shakes out. Your parents gave you a physical body. In their union, they produced a physical human being. But they inherited their bodies from their parents and the parents before them, and so on and so on. All the way back to an original couple known as Adam and Eve. Not Adam and Steve, incidentally. 
And they passed on something to us which has not been a great delight. They passed on to us sin and death. Last week, I had the flu. I felt like death. Praise God, I have a friend that's a doctor, and he ordered up antibiotics for me, which you don't normally do for a virus, but this was more than a virus. And when you're sick, you begin to really realize what you've inherited here is a fallen body that will eventually die unless the Lord comes back and takes us to be with him. Some of us are much closer to death than others. Look around the room. But the, the thing that we're understanding here is that we inherited this. We inherited death. We inherited sickness. We inherited disease. We inherited sin. But then God sent his son, Jesus, to break that inheritance and to create in you something brand new. We talk about it as being in Christ. And there are benefits to being in Christ. For as in Adam all die, those that were just born naturally all die. So in Christ all will be made alive. What's he saying? He's saying, listen, those that die without Christ... face a Christless eternity. But those of us that are in Christ will once again be made alive. There is a tremendous blessing to being in Christ. I, I always think when I, when I read this kind of thing, I, I think of the poor people in, in Rome, Jews who have become Christians. And uh, it just happened to be one of the few times in history where Jews weren't hated by everybody. They were actually quite well tolerated in Rome. But the ones that were hated were Christians. And they had become Christians. So now they had a double whammy. It started out with them being Jewish and all of a sudden we're tolerating the Jews, but we're hating the Christians. And now these Jews have become Christians. We have a problem on our hands. And so the writer of the book of Hebrews will write to the Jews in Rome and say, listen, what you've got is better than. And he'll repeat that topic over and over and over all the way through the book of Hebrews. Better than. Jesus is better than Moses. Grace is better than the law. And we could just go on and on. Our high priest is better than the Old Testament high priest. The story goes on and on as he continues to try and encourage people saying, what you've got is astounding. Don't you dare turn around and go back. Because many of them were saying to themselves, hold it. Jew, okay. Christian, no okay. Okay. Maybe we should just pack up and go back to synagogue. Our homes wouldn't be destroyed. Our families wouldn't be killed by the Romans. Things would change for us. And the writer of Hebrews writes them this tremendous epistle, this tremendous letter saying, listen, guys, you hang in there. What you've got is better than you are in Christ. It's a better deal. Take your Bibles and turn with me to Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing. Just stop right there. Have you ever felt like you were cursed? Or maybe 
God was mad at you and coming after you? Like somehow there was a cloud following you around? Well, I'll tell you, I have had a week just like that. In fact, I've had several weeks like that now. But you need to understand something. God is not angry at you. If you are saved, you are forgiven. Amen. And he has blessed you with every spiritual blessing. Amen. Well, why doesn't everything then go my way? Because that may not be good for you. And God has in mind yes. to bless you with what is good for you. Amen. Who has blessed us in heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. Amen. He predestined us in order to, uh, for, uh, pardon me, us to be adopted as his sons through Jesus Christ in accordance with his will and pleasure to the praise of his glorious grace which he has freely given us in the one he loves now watch here we go it starts to get fun in him in who in Christ in him we have redemption through his blood and forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace there's a little message for you. Just remember that today. In him, we have redemption through his blood and forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. By the way, Christians are no better than anyone else, but we are forgiven. That he's lavished on us with all wisdom and understanding. He made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in Christ to be put into effect when the times have reached their fulfillment to bring all things in heaven and earth under one head even Christ in him we were also chosen having been predestined according to the plan of him that works out everything in conformity with his purpose and his will in order that we who are the first to hope in Christ might be the praise of his glory. Did you ever think there was that many references to being in Christ in your Bible? And yet here it is over and over and over and over again. Verse 13, you also were included in him when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. Having believed, you were marked in him with a seal the promised Holy Spirit. Let's just stop there for a moment. Time and time and time again, we're reading in Him. And the benefits of being in Him. Now there's going to be somebody, maybe not in this room, but maybe online, who's going to say, well, <clears throat> you know, that's, that's good for everybody else, but I'm just not a super Christian. I'm just not up there to be in him. I'm sure that God would do that for everybody else. I'm not sure God would do that for me. Well, here's the, here's the entrance fee. Here's the passport. You also were included in Christ when you heard the word of truth. Someone shared the gospel with you. The gospel of your salvation. Now watch. Having believed, you were marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit. It doesn't say you have to be Billy Graham, some sort of super saint. You have to believe. And if you can say, I believe that Jesus Christ died, rose from the dead, and is my Savior, then you are in him and these benefits belong to you Amen. who are marked the promised Holy Spirit a guarantee guaranteeing what is to come who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those that are 
God's possession to the praise of his glory. In him, in him, in him, in Christ. We used to sing that song, In Christ Alone. And that's exactly what it is. In Adam, what did we get? Sickness and death, a fallen world. I was listening to a rabbi the other day, a dear man who needs the gospel. And he was saying how much better the world is now than it's ever been. He's quite serious. He was saying, listen, in the 1800s, four out of 10 babies died. Now, it's a very rare thing. And he goes on and on and on about all the things that he felt like had improved and how the world was doing better and better and better. And I thought, God bless you, great is your faith. Because that's not what I see. I see a fallen world that is falling faster and harder than it ever has in the past. I see a world that is on the brink of nuclear destruction. I see things being foisted on the, on the, on the public that, that the world is hardly able to understand. For example, let me tell you something. Do you know your Canadian government released a letter this week? You know what the letter said? The letter was written from one of your ministers in the current sitting government to the other ministers in the government, and it got out public. And here's what it said. We had better tell the people we've got the flying saucers. Because when the Americans release their information and the Brits theirs and the Australians and New Zealanders theirs, we're going to be left behind. That came from your government. Now, what are you going to do with that kind of nutball information? I mean, people are trying to pay their bills. People are trying to put food on the table. Flying saucers? Aliens? Real? But you know what? It is. And they are. And the Americans announced just two weeks ago on the 12th, as I said they would, that they have 12 flying saucers. So what's going on here? Well, remember the Bible talks about strong delusion. Strong delusion. And our world is being bathed in strong and stronger and extremely strong delusion. What's going to happen when something does land publicly? And they come out and say, listen, if you take a little mark in your hand here, we can give you a biological upgrade. You won't get sick again. Take it in your hand, take it in your forehead and make this part of a new system of peace. Let's just add to that, by the way. The people that are producing AI, do you know what they announced this week? They announced that AI would write a brand new Bible. That's what they said. Artificial intelligence would give us a Bible that would bring everybody together. And I look at the Bible that I have, knowing that that is the Word of God. And when I read the book of Revelation, it talks about one world government and a coming corrupt world leader and so on and so on and so on. I see it all starting to unfold. And I say to myself, praise God, we are in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 26. You'll remember, by the way, that I predicted that by the 12th there would be information coming forward that would shock people. Most of you didn't catch it because you weren't looking for it. But it is out there. It's public. Hit YouTube. It will be all over the place. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 26. 
Brothers, think of what you were when you were called. Not many of you were wise by human standards, not many influential, not many of noble birth. But God chose the foolish things of this world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of this world to shame the strong. God chose the lowly things of this world and the despised things and the things that are not to nullify the things that are so that no one may boast before him. In other words, <coughs> God didn't choose you because you were smart or because you were talented or because you were great. He chose you in spite of yourself so that he would get the glory for any good that comes from you. Amen. Verse 30. It is because of him that you are in Christ Jesus, who has become for us the wisdom of God that is our righteousness, holiness, and redemption. Therefore, it's written that all that boast, boast in the Lord. Amen. Our boast is not in Adam. Our boast is not in our flesh, and neither is our pride. Our boast is in Christ alone. Our boast is in what he has done for us. That's our joy. Paul said, may I never boast of anything except the cross of Christ. It is because of him, that's the Father, that you are in Christ Jesus, who has become for us the wisdom of God, that is our righteousness, holiness, and redemption. Every good thing you've ever got from God has come through Jesus Christ. Amen. Nothing came any other way. Amen. In Ephesians chapter 2, verse 4, it says, Because of his great love for us, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 4, Because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, has made us alive with Christ, even when we were dead in our transgressions. It is by grace that you have been saved. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. In order that in the coming ages he might show the incomparable riches of his grace expressed to us in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. So what does God see when he sees you? If you could be transported from here to heaven, what would God see? Well, he'd see every dirty little thing I ever did, every dirty little thing I ever thought, every rotten thing that I am. No. What he would see when he looked at you is his son crucified for your sins. Amen. He would see you as righteous and holy and clean. Amen. You know, when you put on a pair of sunglasses, I should have brought mine in with me. When you put on a pair of sunglasses, everything becomes tinted the shade of the glasses. If your glasses are rose-colored, not the frame, but the lenses, everything you look at has a sort of a rosy hue to it. Well, God happens to have a glass in front of him that is blood-colored. And when he looks at you, he sees you through the blood. Amen. Because you are in Christ Amen. Jesus. You walk out of here today 10 feet tall. Amen. You walk out of here on fire because he has saved you. Amen. He has chosen you. Amen. He has elected you. And he has forgiven you. Amen. It is by grace that you've been saved. Through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It's a gift of God. By the way, when it says it's a gift of God, it's not referring to the faith. It's referring to the grace. It's a gift of God not by works, so that no one can boast. For we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God has prepared in advance for us to do. 
Amen. Amen. In Christ. In Christ. In Christ. Well, what's the benefit to that? Well, let me tell you, it sure beats what Adam gave you. Yes. It's eternal life. Amen. Will we die? Yes. Yes, we'll all die or be resurrected or be raptured, one or the other. But the difference is we'll step out of this life into the next life instantaneously. Absent from the body, present with the Lord. We enjoy his benefit and his blessing because it's been poured out to us because Jesus won the battle. In Galatians chapter 3, we read this. You are sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For you all were baptized into Christ and have clothed yourselves with Christ. There is therefore now neither Greek nor Jew nor Greek nor slave nor free nor male nor female. You're all one in Christ Jesus. This is a huge topic in your Bible. Just in case you thought we were cherry picking a few lines, we're not. It's a huge topic. The fact that you are in Christ. You were born out of Adam. But something happened when you got saved. You were born again. Amen. This time, it's a better deal. Amen. The second birth puts you in Christ and seals you with his spirit. Romans chapter 12. Just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members don't have all the same functions. So in Christ, there are many who form one body. And each member belongs to all the others. We have different gifts according to the grace given us. One man's gifts is prophesying. Let him prophesy in proportion to his faith. If it's serving, let him serve. In, uh, let him serve. If it's teaching, let him teach. If it's encouraging, let him encourage. And the passage goes on. All predicated on the fact that we who believe are in Christ. Well, I have more to give you, but we're out of time. So I'll just read the last one because it's a really long one. <laughs> Romans. Therefore, there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus. Amen. You know, I've had people come up to me and go, I'm so sorry, I, I wasn't there on Sunday. I... I I, 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 oh, please, I, I, I minister some forgiveness to me. I, 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 oh, it's all right. We missed you. But there is, therefore, now no condemnation. Because through Christ Jesus, the law of the spirit of life has set me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law was powerless to do and that it was weakened by the sinful nature, God did by sending his son in the likeness of sinful man to be a sin offering. And so he condemned sin in sinful man. In order that in the righteous, the, pardon me, the righteous requirements of the law might be met in us who do not live according to the sinful nature but live according to the spirit. Verse 31. What then shall we say in response to this? If God is for us, who could be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for all of us, how will he not also along with him graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It's God that justifies. Who is it that condemns? Christ Jesus who died, more than that, who was raised to life and is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or the sword? As it's written, for your sake we face death all day long. That we are considered to be sheep. Should as considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors. Amen. Through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor demons, neither the present, nor the future, nor any powers, neither height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation 
will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Friends, when you came to Christ and accepted him as your Savior, you were transferred, transferred from being in Adam to being in Christ. And your New Testament is chock-a-block full of information about the blessings of being in Christ. Does it mean we still live in a physical world? Yep. Does it mean there will be difficulties and troubles? Oh, brother, does it ever. Because the enemy comes and paints a target on you. But it means that you'll never go through it alone. It means that he will bring you through. I used to quote all the time. I used to quote this. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. Of course, I saw myself as the righteous there. It was like saying, woe weighs me. But does anybody know how that statement ends? But the Lord delivers them out of them all. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them out of them all. Praise God. Amen. If you're in Christ, say amen. amen. If not, see me at the end of the service. <laughs> Will you bow your heads? Precious Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you that we are in Christ Jesus. That we stand in his shadow. That we cleave to him as Psalm 91 says. That we dwell in the shadow of the Almighty. I thank you that he is our gladiator. He is our victor. He is the victor of the dark domain. He has won the battle and the victory for us. And we are grateful. Thank you, Lord, that you don't view us in sin. You don't view us in weakness. You don't view us in failure. You don't view us in foolishness. But you see us in Christ. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen.